Every day, as the sun dips below the horizon, a little child returns home from school with tears streaming down their face. The weight of their sorrow seems too heavy for such tender shoulders to bear. The sight tugs at the heartstrings of anyone who witnesses their pain. Their cries echo through the walls, reaching the ears of a mother who knows instinctively that something is amiss. With a gentle touch and a compassionate gaze, she draws her child near, offering a safe space for the tears to flow freely. She listens intently, allowing the child to unload the burdens that have accumulated throughout the day. In the sacred space of their home, the child finds solace in their mother's embrace. She wipes away the tears, her touch a balm to their wounded spirit. With every word, she reassures the child that their emotions are valid and that they are not alone in their struggles. The mother's nurturing instinct goes beyond comforting words. She takes it upon herself to understand the root cause of her child's distress. She reaches out to teachers, engaging in open and honest conversations, seeking understanding and resolution. Her advocacy becomes a beacon of hope, ensuring that her child's voice is heard and their pain acknowledged. But before we dive into our captivating story, make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you never miss an amazing tale we bring to your screens. Our channel is all about showcasing the remarkable stories that exist all around us, stories that touch our hearts and remind us of the incredible potential within each and every one of us. Joe, an eight-year-old kid, went to school with his hair in a ponytail. He could hear laughter from his classmates as he approached the classroom. They all used his long hair to make fun of him. Joe was crushed, particularly since he was growing his hair for a purpose. What shocked this young guy the most was that the teasing began with his instructor, Mr. Cooper, a man of conservative views. He was the one who pushed the others to tease Joe about his hair. Joe's parents saw a change in their son's eyes as the mocking continued in the days that followed. He sobbed a lot and refused to tell them what was troubling him. Mrs. Burns, the school's art teacher, who was relatively new to the school, spotted Joe weeping in the restroom one day. She approached him and encouraged him to tell her what was really troubling him. Joe then expressed his pain and mentioned that he is bullied every day. You have a wonderful heart. Don't allow anybody else to modify it, okay? She advised. But even Mr. Cooper makes fun of me, Joe said at that point. It's not right. Thanks to her care, his sobbing had finally ended. Some individuals will never grow out of being bullies. Mrs. Burns answered, rubbing his shoulder, I'll try to speak to him. Don't explain why. He has no right to know anything. This is my thing, Joe inquired, his eyes fixed on the instructor. Sure, she says, this is just between you and me but you have nothing to be embarrassed about. The instructor told him. Still, I don't want them to know, the young boy repeated, and Mrs. Burns nodded slightly. Mrs. Burns discussed Joe's hair with other instructors over the following several days, and it seemed that the majority of them didn't like it. Mrs. Figgins, one of them said, if he's allowed to grow his hair out at eight years old, he'll become a hoodlum in high school. At this age, children, particularly males, need discipline. Mrs. Burns decided to call Joe's father and explain what was going on since she realized she needed to do something about Joe's situation. Patrick, Joe's father, commented after learning what was causing his son's dissatisfaction. Your teacher, Mrs. Burns, just called. She revealed everything to me. Are the children teasing you? Is that why you've been crying after school every day? Patrick asked kneeling before his kid and looking him in the eyes. It's not just my mates. Mr. Cooper is the worst, Joe said, shocking his father. Patrick knew Mr. Cooper and thought he was a lovely guy. Therefore, his actions toward Joe shocked him. Patrick then asked Joe why he hadn't told his friends why he was growing his hair. Joe said that it was none of their concern, and Patrick concurred. Whatever the cause, the way they handled Joe was terrible. You're exactly correct, child. But you're aware of something. I believe that hair needs to be cut. You've finally achieved the necessary length, and I have a plan.
Patrick replied, clearly pleased that his son had accomplished his aim. Joe's mother then cut her son's hair as Patrick captured the scene on video. Mr. Cooper met Joe at the door the next day, but he had no clue Patrick was there as well. Joe, at long last. You don't look like a female anymore. He screamed at Joe. Mr. Cooper gasped. Oh, Perkins, Mr. When he noticed Patrick was also there, so you cut your child's hair. Congratulations, he said, reaching out to shake Patrick's hand. Instead of shaking his head, Patrick took out his phone and handed it to the instructor who had abused his child. When the footage from the previous night started playing, Mr. Cooper was taken aback. I understand, Mr. Cooper, that you have been supporting the jokes about my son. I didn't expect it from you, sir, Patrick admitted. I didn't know he was going to donate his hair to cancer sufferers, the instructor said shakily. Okay. Joe refused to inform anybody until he had achieved his objective. We volunteered at a children's hospital in April of last year. He fell in love with it and began growing his hair right away. This school year, though, he started coming home in tears because everyone, even his teacher, insulted him. Do you think that's fair, sir? Joe's father reprimanded the older guy, who was obviously embarrassed by his behavior. I apologize, Joe. Mr. Perkins, I had no idea. My granddaughter just had three rounds of chemotherapy and lost all of her hair as a result. My son and daughter-in-law had corresponded with this organization that manufactures wigs out of contributions. The instructor explained, his eyes welling up with emotions. Thank you, young boy, Mr. Cooper said, explaining that not every hero wears a cape. I was totally wrong. Please accept my sincere apologies. That day, Joe was the hero of his own narrative. The rest of the class was asking him questions and staring up at him in awe. Some were even excited to do so since the cause was genuinely one of a kind.